dear diary. After winning the domestic treble in our first season at Arsenal, the pressure is on to deliver even more success in our second. We brought in some big names to bolster our squad, including Kylian Mbappe, Khalid El Bloshi, Lamine Kassi, and Alejandro Balde. With these new additions, we're confident we can mount a serious challenge for the UEFA Champions League trophy, which is our main aim for the season. But first, we have some important matches to play. Up first is the Community Shield against Liverpool, where we will look to start the new season with a bang. Then, we have a tough trip to Old Trafford to face Manchester United, now managed by Antonio Conte. It won't be an easy start to the season, but we're ready for the challenge. Can we live up to the high expectations placed upon us and achieve our goals for the season? Only one way to find out. Until next time. And welcome to episode 98 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Arsenal. I hope you are doing well. And coming up today, we start off season two gameplay wise. The main focus for this season is going to be to try and win the UEFA Champions League. But first, another trophy which we haven't won yet the FA Community Shield that we will take on Liverpool before kicking off the Premier League season with a trip to Old Trafford to take on Antonio Conte's Manchester United. So if you're looking forward to those two games, in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as you would have seen through that intro, we did make quite a few moves in the transfer episode yesterday. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. You also would have seen the season preview for the Premier League season. We are fairly heavy favourites, those three big additions that we did make as well. As Khalid Al Bloshi, not quite so big, but does help us out on the bench and also as homegrown nation, which does help us out registration-wise, but we are fairly strong favourites for the Premier League this upcoming season. So hopefully we can defend that title, but as I said, the main focus is going to be to try and win the UEFA Champions League. And if we can do that, that would probably just about do it for our OE. I think we could call it a success then. And we can move on to a different save off the back of that. But as you can see, quite a few players of ours in this best 11. And to start off the season, we are taking on Liverpool, who didn't actually win any trophies last season, but did finish second in the Premier League. They were above us for a long part of the season, but did just slip up a fair bit late, unfortunately, for them. It did allow us to win the title with a game in hand, but Jurgen Klopp still in charge. So we've got some pretty good players like Jude Bellingham and Julian Timber. This was a team who had the wood over us last season. Hopefully this time around, we can get the job done over them and finally pick up a win over Jurgen Klopp since we have made the move to Arsenal in terms of us going into this game, seeing as it is kind of a pre-season game, albeit one for a trophy, which seeing as we do have a chance of winning it, I would like to do so, but unfortunately Aaron Ramsdale does have an injury going into this game, so it does mean that Mauricio makes his way into goal for him, but that is our only injury concern, Ramsdale. We could start him if we really wanted to, but it's the community shield. We'll keep him fresh for hopefully some bigger tasks throughout the rest of the season. Apart from that too, we'll go through it shortly when we do show you guys the team sheets before the game, but a few rotation players will get a chance here with some of our regular starters still a bit tired from our preseason schedule, but hopefully we can start off the season by winning a trophy and we'll come back shortly from Wembley as we take on Liverpool in the FA Community Shield. And here are the team sheets for this Community Shield. Liverpool today will be in the red, we will be in the black. There is their lineup for 3-3. It is a strong looking lineup, but these days I'd argue our best 11 does look a little bit stronger, albeit a few changes as I said. Mauricio and goal also Kamara over Salabar and Vieira over Erdegaard, those players quite injury prone off the back of our preseason, but hopefully we can still pick up a win and grab our first trophy of the season nice and early. And six minutes into this one, we get the first hole. It is a throw down left-hand side to one of our new signings at wing-back in Alejandro Balde, formerly of Bayern Munich, as is the wing-back on the other side out right. 
and Lamine Cassie. Those were the big areas aside from Kylian Mbappe, which did look the weakest going into this season. Our wing backs, those two, should do a job for us. Now, Cassie on the ball. Curtis Jones, though, does rob that from him, but then Coop Miners does quite well to get that ball back for us. Now, Pere loses out there to Bellingham, but actually recovers quite well, and we are still in possession here in Balde. Starts to make his way forward down this left-hand side. Picks out Martinelli. Mbappe was in behind. Ops not to find him. Pere with a shot. Comes off the post. Decent chance there. But still nil all. Coming up to the 10-minute mark. And 20 minutes into this one, we get our next highlight. Curtis Jones there has just gone off the field. So Liverpool only playing with 10 men in this highlight. Can we make the most of that while he is down there by our goalkeeper? Now Ibanez here plays this over to Tadebo in defence. For Liverpool, they try and make their way out from the back, but might be a bit difficult with only 10 men on the pitch. Still, Timber on the ball will pick out a spree of the year. Does look to control it quite well, but Martinelli in the end does actually get that back. It will be a bell day with a poor pass there. And Batarina puts the ball into the mix. So thankfully, Coop Miners does head that one away. And Vera will clear this one. So Liverpool do still have the ball. Quite a long highlight. And now Mbappe does well to win that back for us. Slide tackle falls rather fortunately to Gabriel Martinelli. Now Curtis Jones makes his way back on the pitch, as you can see, top right corner. But Lamine Cassie picks out Saka inside the box. Timber will bring him down. Saka goes down like Timber, and that makes it a penalty. And it should be Kylian Mbappe on these for us this season. Should be a lot more reliable than what we had here last season. He puts it away for his first competitive goal for the club. I know the number 79. Looks a little bit ugly, but unfortunately, Saka and Jesus quite reluctant to let go of their numbers. So Mbappe can get both of them. He puts one away from the penalty spot. And we go 1-0 up about halfway through the first half. And just past the half hour, mate, we get another highlight here in this first half. The only bit of action that has happened since you were last here. The main Cassie has picked up a yellow card. Good work there from Balde. Impressive start from him. Good tackle, but unfortunately, Liverpool do keep the ball now. Curtis Jones, but arena there. Somehow gets him behind one of our center backs. It was Bumba. Just looked a little bit off that, but unfortunately, that makes it one all I say off, not offside. But the fact that he did stop so soon, a bit random. And Liverpool do grab an equalizer in this first half. It did look like there that Bumba should have had enough pace there to deal with Butterina. Had a decent head start on him, but unfortunately, slowed up for some reason. And it's one all. About 10 minutes shy of half time. And then it's half time in this FA Community Shield for 2030. And we are one all here with Liverpool at half time. We've certainly been the better team overall, but obviously it was helped a little bit by the penalty, which we did put away, but then a bit of a frustrating goal scored by Butterina. And we do go into the sheds locked up at one all. We're going to make one change here at half time. The mean Cassie with that yellow card will take him off. Wilfred Singo can come on for him, but apart from that, Reasonably happy with how we are playing. Hopefully, we can just get another goal to grab a trophy to start the season. In the second half, we get things back underway at 1-0. And it's only taken a few minutes of the second half for the first highlight to get shown of it. We did tell our guys that we weren't happy with that first half performance. So hopefully, it does kick them into gear a little bit more in the second half. But to be fair, we weren't that bad. Just hoping it does get a reaction. And Saka picks out Mbappe in the inner box. He grabs a double on competitive debut, and that makes it 2-1 Arsenal, and already might be seeing the difference between someone like Kylian Mbappe and the likes of Jesus and Barea for this upcoming season. He is a world-class striker, just shovels that one home nicely from that near side, which we saw it from, and that makes it 2-1, nice and early in the second half. And just shy of the hour, mate, we do have a free kick here. And Mbappe puts this one into the mixer. Kamara gets his head on the end of that one, looking for that cushion goal, unfortunately. Just goes over the bar, but so far, a good start to the second half. We are 2-1 up with a half hour left. And again, not too long off the back of that previous highlight. Now we have a throw in down that left-hand side. And we do keep the ball here deep inside of the Liverpool half. So, so far, it does look like that halftime talk might have just spurred us on. Good chance here. For Bakayo Saka, it comes off the base of the post. That's a few times now that that has happened, and it does remain 2-1, but now well and truly on the front foot in this game. And while we are here, we might make a substitution with Vieira only going okay on a 6.6, .6, 
No Erdegaard on the bench. What we might do is try out one of our new signings, formerly of Cardiff. Khalid al Bloshi can play as an attacking midfielder, so we'll see how he does do in that position for the remaining 20 or so minutes. And we'll still have four subs left to use off the back of that one, but we are still 2-1 up. And just inside the last 20 minutes of the second half, it's a big mistake there from Maruccio from that corner, but thankfully we somehow scrambled that one away. Vlahovic with what looked like a tap-in. Mo Salah with a shot. Maruccio this time does claim it after it was blocked. But bit of a scary moment there. That's first chance that Liverpool have had in the second half. Thankfully, we do hold on and keep our 2-1 lead. And while we are here, Gabriel Martinelli and Moisa Perey are down to Red Hart, so Trincao and also will bring on Charlie Patino with 15 minutes left, still thankfully up by a goal. And only a few minutes off the back of that corner to Liverpool, now it's a free kick in their favour, they try and put that one far post, but thankfully Kamara does head that one away, but Timmer now edge of the box, unleashes one, just goes over the bar, but we are now inside the last five minutes, and Coop Miners has picked up a yellow card, so it might not be a bad idea to take him off, with all the substitutions that we do have available, we'll bring on Carvalho for him, Al Bloshi will switch him so that Carvalho is the attacking midfielder and also Balde down to Red Hart. Yukubu will come on for him. Still up by a goal with only five minutes left. And only a few minutes off the back of that last batch of substitutions. It is a free kick here in our favour. Cameron grab one more goal to make sure that we are going to bring home our first trophy of the season in our first competitive game. But Kayo Saka inside the box plays that one in nicely for Carvalho. Good save there though from the Liverpool goalkeeper. There is going to be five minutes of added time, and we're nearly inside the last minute of those as we do get one more throw, and hopefully we grab just an extra goal to make sure we do hold on to pick up a win here. Otherwise, this one could be going, I believe, straight to penalties and Mbappe here with a chance for a hat-trick, but yet again, Luis Jr. there with a good save. That would be some debut, a hat-trick, albeit somewhat expected for a player like Kylian Mbappe. will go to cautious and just make sure that Liverpool, hopefully, don't get a chance here in the dying stages of this one. The corner doesn't find the head of an Arsenal player, and Timber actually gets a chance here to do something on the counter-attack, but thankfully Patino heads that one all the way back. to Marucho sketchy moment from that corner earlier nearly cost us, but thankfully we somehow found a way to clear our lines, and it does look like that was the big chance for Liverpool in the second half, now just waiting for the full-time whistle to blow. Not too sure why it's taking so long, but we are back in position briefly. Give it back to Liverpool, albeit Bellingham's pass is blocked. And thankfully, despite a few skiers late on in that one, we do hold on for a 2-1 win. Liverpool, of course, did make the Champions League final last season. So a win over those guys is quite useful to give us some confidence going into the Champions League campaign. Not that really we need it. We know we should be a good team this season with those signings that we have made, but it's a good start. We pick up a trophy at Wembley, and we claim the FA Community Shield off the back of a 2-1 win over Liverpool. So a good start to the new season for us there, lifting the FA Community Shield. We did slightly outplay Liverpool, especially in terms of the stats. XG probably helped out quite a bit by that penalty that we did get, but thankfully we do pick up a win and lift a trophy at the start of the season before we do preview our first game of the Premier League away at Manchester United, a somewhat relevant update in terms of rivalries, the first time I've actually got this happening in this save, apparently the rivalry between us and Liverpool has now gone to the next stage, I suppose that's off the back of the title race from last season, also the fact we are expected to be competing for quite a few of the same trophies this upcoming season, so according to the game, Liverpool and Arsenal are now the fiercest rivals that we can have, not Tottenham, which is a little bit surprising, but also, because Manchester United have been so bad, especially last season, where they only finished smack bang mid-table, apparently now, no longer considered fierce rivals, but still a little bit of a rivalry, we'll see if that does anything going into our opening day of the Premier League season, and if Antonio Conte can make them just a little bit better. In a day prior to our opening clash of the Premier League season, we are going to make a sale, which we did suggest might happen at the end of yesterday's transfer special, because the bid had been put in for him. Takahiro Tomiyasu contract expires at the end of this season, so we have offered him out, and he is about to sign for Bournemouth 
Up front, the fee will be 12.5 million, but a further 10 million in installments. So it does mean overall this deal is worth 22.5 million pounds. It does also mean Yanni A. Grass can be registered for this upcoming season, which might hopefully help us in terms of dynamics, because so far, him and Vaskovic not too happy that they have not been registered for the Premier League. If Tomiyasu did stay, we would just loan those youngsters out to get some game time and to develop. But Tomiyasu, he is leaving for Bournemouth, so it does mean that Grass will be sticking around as a right-back option for this upcoming season. The same case applies with Kieran Tenney at left-back. He's also in the last year of his contract. If he leaves, Vaskovic can get registered. And also up front, Gabriel Jesus in the last year of his contract will try and get rid of him. And Florenzano, currently loan listed with Jesus leaves, he will be making his way into that squad as well. And only a few clicks further forward from that sale of Takahiro Tomiyasu, we are about to get into the opening game of the Premier League season on a Friday night. It's a big one as well, as we do take on Manchester United, albeit apparently not quite as strong a rival as they once were also these days down to being a four-star reputation club, but these days managed by Antonio Conte. So it'll be interesting to see what he does going into this upcoming season, albeit they are still only predicted to finish in seventh. So based on the team that we have at Arsenal these days, you'd like to think this is a game that we can win, albeit we did lose this game last season away from home by a scoreline of 1-0. So hopefully we can get something out of this game and it wouldn't be the worst result against one of the bigger teams in England going into this one. No injury concerns as well. The likes of Ramsdale, Erdegaard, as well as Saliba, all available for this Premier League opener. We'll come back shortly with the team sheets and hopefully get off to a winning start from Old Trafford as we look to defend our Premier League title. And here are the team sheets for this Premier League season opener here on Manchester United at home with these days, as I said, Antonio Conte in charge. Very defensive, five at the back, two DMs, two wingers, and a striker. So hopefully they won't offer too much in attack in terms of us. That is our first choice 11 going into this upcoming season, hopefully. They can get the job done and we can get off to a good start here and a tricky away match first up. And just over 10 minutes into this one, we get the first highlight of the season. It is a free kick there to Manchester United, albeit a bit of a brave option there trying to switch flanks as we did with someone marking their player down that right hand side. But they do still keep the ball here through one of their new signings in Jeremy Doku. Also interesting to see I've got Alexander Isaac these days, but we do get the ball back here in Saka with a long range shot. Unfortunately, though. That one never really threatens the target, but so far a decent start. Just no shots on target. Still nil all coming up to the 20 minute mark. And about 10 minutes off the back of that opening highlight is another highlight which does start here to Manchester United with a throwing yet again trying to play their way out from the back. We put a little bit of pressure on them, albeit Marcus Rashford plays a ball over the top. Bit of an iffy header away there from Bamba, but thankfully Balde does recover to get that ball back for us so far. He's looked pretty impressive in the game in a little bit that we have seen so far. We do lose the ball out there though, and Patterson does win it back for United, albeit Martinelli gets it back for us. We try and put that one back into the middle. Graven Birch wins it back, and then Pere wins it back for us. So definitely a battle for possession in midfield so far. Good chance here though for Kylian Mbappe, but good deflection there from Buddy Achille. It does go over the bar. We do still have a corner. But Man United so far defending quite well as you would expect with all those defenders that they do have. Bella Kotchap, one of the players that we did sell in this past transfer window, does deal with that first corner. But now Martinelli puts this one into the mixer. There is a push there from Cassie, so it's a free kick to Manchester United. So still nil all late in this first half. And of the last five minutes of this first half, it is a free kick here for Manchester United. Rashford puts this one towards the far post. We somewhat clear that one away now. Bessie inside the box. Rashford, a long shot. That one comes off the post looking for that top right corner. Thankfully, the woodwork does help us out there a little bit. And just before halftime, one more highlight here to United. We try and head that one away, but Pedersen plays this one in to the box to Doku. And it looks like Gabriel Martinelli has pushed him in the back or done a tackle there, which brought him down inside the box. And it does look like we're going to give away a penalty and we might be 1-0 down here in this Premier League opener unless Ramsdale can come up 
with a save. You'd imagine it would be Rashford on the penalty. Indeed, that is the case. It wasn't the most powerful penalty, but must have been well placed. Ramsdale went the right way, didn't quite get there, and despite a fairly decent start in this game, late in that first half, Manchester United did get on the front foot with give away a penalty, and I think that means it is going to be 1-0 to them going into half time, and indeed that is the case. Before that penalty, definitely had the better of things in that first half, albeit shots on target. Little bit of a concern, that's not what you expect when you've got someone like Kylian Mbappe up front, but to be fair, lots of players out there on average ratings are not too sure if making substitutions just yet is going to help out much. We might give the boys, though, a bit of a rev up like we did in the previous game at halftime, and hopefully that leads to a better performance in the second half. We'll get things back underway. 1-0 down. And in fact, we've got a highlight immediately from the restart to start the second half off, so hopefully that halftime team talk like in the previous game might just get us to fire up a bit more in this one, and Balde starts to make his way dangerously down this left-hand side, just holds the ball up there just near the corner flag. Now Martinelli makes his way to the edge of the box, some dangerous passing here. Parade, nice ball forward, but unfortunately can't quite link up with either Martinelli or Mbappe, and now the Georgian goalkeeper here for United will help them try and clear their lines, but a poor pass through him. Sucker does win that back for us now. Cassie makes his way towards the byline, plays that in for Saka, loses it, but we do find Perey here, and it makes its way through the hands of Mamadashvili, and we do grab an early equaliser in the second half, so overall, weren't behind for that long, and Moisa Perey, who we did sign when we first came to the club last season, he gets a goal, slightly fortunate with that one, going through the hands of the United goalkeeper, but it feels like that's fair, because I did think we were slightly better in that first half, up until we did give away that penalty, and we make it one all early in the second half. And just shy of the hour mark, we are on the attack here yet again. It looks like with a throw in inside the final third, Martinelli picks out Balde. What can the left back do? Unleashes a shot, Urgard. Might have got his head on the end of that one. Just goes over the bar. So still one all, but looks like we're doing some good work yet again early in the second half. Unfortunately, though, Balde did pick up a yellow card there, so we might look to take him off also. Erdogan and Mbappe on average dragon Severa and Jesus will come on for them while Yakubu can go out to left back with a half hour left and still locked up at one all. And we make our way forward to the 69 minute mark for our next highlight. Martinelli there was on the attack and we now have the ball just outside of the box. Coop Miners tries to put that one top left corner pretty accurate but unfortunately the Georgian goalkeeper with a big save there for Manchester United. Now Martinelli will put this corner into the mix of it. Bella Kopchap will head that one away and United just able to clear their lines there. They get that one out to our centre backs. Still one all with 20 minutes left in this one and just looking at fitness. Both our wingers are down to red hearts also not on the greatest rating. So Trincao can go out left and Carvalho out right and hopefully that will help us grab a winner. Still one all with 20 minutes left. And we've just entered injury time in this game. We've tried to go positive late, but it doesn't look like it's going to help. And unfortunately, that penalty, which we gave away late in the first half, is probably the big factor in this game for a reason. We don't come away with a win, but still away at Manchester United, a point, not a bad result. We did lose here last season, so hopefully it is a sign of improvement, albeit the likes of Mbappe, Erdegaard, we were quite quiet in that game, so hopefully that won't be something that happens too often. But obviously Manchester United, with that very defensive formation, might have just kept us a bit more quiet than most teams will this upcoming season. And it is a one-all draw to kick off the season. Not a great result, not a great performance, but it was a tough test to start the season. We'll take the point and hopefully build from that over the rest of the opening month with some games which do look a little bit easier. But all we can manage there from Old Trafford is a one-all draw on the opening night of the Premier League season. So a slightly disappointing result there in our first game of the season away at Old Trafford. But I suppose that's somewhat expected with a new manager there and also with that very defensive formation that they did use. As I said, still a better result than we did pick up in that game last season. But it does mean early doors, mid-table. But hopefully we can improve on that with our games upcoming. There is a table off the back of the first match week. Still very early doors though, but I think that will do it 
For today's episode, we picked up a trophy with the Community Shield beating Liverpool 2-1 to win that and then a one-all draw on the opening day of the Premier League season. Also, we did get rid of Takahiro Tomiyasu in the last year of his contract. If you did enjoy today's episode, the first one gameplay-wise of Season 2 here at Arsenal, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow, do a little bit of stuff around deadline day. Hopefully, we might be able to get rid of the likes of Jesus and Tenny before then. Otherwise, those younger players, the likes of Vaskovic and Florenzano, will have to get loaned out. We might come back and play Brentford on deadline day as well, or at the end of August. And then from there, we'll either play Watford or see when the Champions League starts. There could actually be our first game of the league phase of the Champions League coming up in tomorrow's episode as well, because that will be the main focus for the second season at Arsenal, because it is a trophy we are now looking at winning. Having picked up the domestic treble last season, most of our attention on camera this season will be on the Champions League, and hopefully it does mean we can finish the season before I do go off to South Korea at the end of next week so we'll come back tomorrow do some deadline day stuff take on Brentford in the Premier League and maybe also our first game in the league phase of the Champions League for this season so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers